Hey there, and welcome back to Simmer and Stir. Today, we're making a soft and fluffy vanilla cake using my easy cake method that's almost as easy as doing this. So put away that box mix and let's get started. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then lightly spray a nonstick nine inch round cake pan with cooking spray and line the bottom with parchment paper. Then give another light spray. This cake comes together quickly and must go in the oven immediately once mixed, so prep all your ingredients before you begin. We'll start with butter, but melted, not softened, for faster preparation. Butter adds flavor and richness to cakes, but also makes them hard and dry when refrigerated. So in addition to the butter, and here I'm actually using a dairy-free butter, I also add some canola oil. This will keep the cake soft and tender, even when refrigerated. Next, I'm adding a touch of apple cider vinegar to plain unsweetened almond milk, which will help this cake rise, as well as a good dose of pure vanilla extract. I'm using almond milk in order to make this cake dairy-free for my nephew who has a dairy allergy, but you can find the equally delicious dairy-based recipe on my website. Now combine some unbleached cake flour, baking powder, and baking soda. Set this aside, but grab a sifter and keep it handy because we're going to sift this into the batter in just a minute. Now place your sugar and salt in a large bowl and add in your whole eggs. Once you add the eggs to the sugar, you want to start beating them immediately to prevent the eggs from curing and forming hard dry lumps in your batter. So immediately start beating your eggs with a handheld mixer on medium speed for about three minutes. Typically, softened butter and sugar are creamed together to incorporate air into cakes, but because I'm using melted butter in this recipe, I am borrowing from the foam method of cake making and creating a foam with whole eggs and sugar. An egg foam also creates a lighter, more stable structure than butter and sugar. Butter melts at 98 degrees, so as soon as your traditional cake hits the oven, it can deflate whereas egg foams expand when they are heated, think souffles, angel food, or chiffon cakes that grow and maintain their airiness as they bake. So three minutes later, you should have something that looks like this, and you should see a ribbon of foam dripping off your beater and taking a second or two to disappear back into the main batter. Now with the beater running, slowly drizzle in your butter oil mixture until just combined. This will pop any large bubbles, which you want to get rid of because you don't want large holes in your cake, but don't over mix this because you want to maintain the network of very, very fine bubbles. Working quickly, switch to a hand whisk and pour in all of your milk mixture and gently whisk this in until just combined. The key to these last steps is not over mixing anything. I'm leaving these last two portions of the mixing process uncut and in real time so you can see exactly how long you should be mixing this batter. Next, grab your flour and sifter and quickly sift the flour into the wet ingredients and then gently but deftly whisk that together until just combined. You should still see some small lumps at this point and it should definitely not be completely smooth. Don't do this, but I pause for a minute to show you the consistency of this cake batter. It should look a bit like pancake batter with a few small lumps. Now divide your batter into the two 9 inch round cake pans you prepared earlier. You should have about 600 to 610 grams of batter per pan. Run the tip of a butter knife through the batter in each pan like so and get these directly into the center of your preheated oven for 28 minutes or until a paring knife inserted into the center of the cake comes out clean. Remove the cakes from the oven and place on a cooling rack and let cool in the pans for 10 minutes before turning out and peeling off the parchment paper. 
Cooling these upside down will diminish any excessive doming, which will make these cakes easier to stack into a layer cake. These cakes are so moist, soft, and delicious just on their own, and the best thing about them is how fast they are to make. I timed myself at about 9 minutes to get these in the oven once my ingredients were prepped. They also come out remarkably consistent as long as you don't overmix the batter. They also maintain a great soft and tender texture even after refrigeration, which if you're going to frost these cakes, you will have to refrigerate them. Speaking of which, let me show you the most delicious dairy-free buttercream and how to present this easy cake in a way that will wow anyone you serve it to. Buttercream frosting, as the name implies, is based on butter. But with my poor little nephew developing an allergy to dairy, I struggled to find a dairy-free butter substitute that would work well in all of his favorite baked goods. I usually don't make brand recommendations, and this is not sponsored in any way, but I wanted to save you the struggle I experienced because there are so many brands out there, and they're all expensive, and they all taste and perform differently. I even made a cake with one brand that was so bad I had to throw it away, and I hate wasting food. As of now, I've found that this BioLife plant-based butter is the best thing that I've tried so far. I particularly love that it's not only dairy-free, but also soy-free, nut-free, and does not contain flaxseed oil. It also comes in an unsalted version, which was a game changer in terms of controlling the sometimes off flavors you can get with these dairy substitutes. I made both this cake and this buttercream with the unsalted BioLife butter and they both came out great. The only thing you will notice when making a dairy-free cake is that it will not brown as well as a cake made with traditional butter and milk. That does make it less flavorful than a traditional cake, but it still bakes up light and fluffy, especially if you are using my easy cake method that I showed you earlier. So this American style buttercream is easy to make, but known for being sweet. My version isn't too sweet and pairs perfectly with my easy fluffy cake, which isn't overly sweet to begin with. For this recipe, you'll want to cut your butter into smaller chunks and place them into a large mixing bowl to soften. The butter will soften faster if you cut it into smaller pieces. Now weigh out your powdered sugar. If I haven't said it before, all of my recipes are developed by weight and will turn out better if you weigh your ingredients. This is especially important with deceptive looking ingredients like this powdered sugar. I know it looks like a lot, but it is mostly air and disappears to nothing once you combine it with the butter. Right before you're ready to start mixing your buttercream, combine some pure vanilla extract, plain unsweetened almond milk, and salt in a small dish and mix to dissolve the salt. This ensures the tiny amount of salt in this recipe is evenly distributed. When your butter is soft enough, you will be able to easily push your beaters through it like this. Now, mix the butter on low to medium speed just to smooth it out. Add in your powdered sugar one cup at a time until it is all incorporated. Make sure you keep your mixer on low speed as you add the powdered sugar, or powdered sugar will go everywhere. Once all of your powdered sugar is incorporated, your buttercream should look like this. It's lighter in color and smooth, but a bit stiff. So this is when you add your vanilla, almond milk, and salt, and beat that in on low to medium speed until light and fluffy. Don't overmix this. You don't want a bunch of big air pockets in your buttercream because that won't allow for a smooth finish to your cake. And there you have it, a luscious, smooth, fluffy, and totally vegan vanilla buttercream. You can find the link for the exact amounts in this recipe and all of my recipes on my website linked in the description box below. So finally, let's frost this cake.
Now I know there are a lot of cake videos out there that show cakes made to look like everything imaginable, and those are great. But if you don't have that level of cake decorating skill, don't worry because you can still make a beautiful cake with very little effort or skill. I actually love cakes that look natural and homemade and evoke a kind of rustic elegance because at the end of the day, a cake is for eating and enjoying with friends and family, not laboring over for hours until it becomes a museum piece. So here's my favorite way to decorate any cake that is easy, elegant, and doesn't require a lot of specialty cake decorating tools. Place your completely cooled cake on your serving platter. If you have a turntable, it does make this easier. Next, top this layer with about one and a half cups of your buttercream and spread this out to an even layer that is slightly thicker around the outside edge. Next, place your second cake layer upside down on top of your frosting. Top this with about one and three quarters of a cup of buttercream and just spread this out, working it out to the edges until there is a nice even layer across the top and all the excess is moved to the edge of the cake and just about ready to fall over the edge of the cake. I like to switch to a smaller offset spatula or old fashioned butter server and gently work this excess buttercream down over the edge of the cake, being careful not to get too much on your serving platter. Just keep working around the cake until you have a nice even layer of frosting all around. And don't worry about smoothness, we're just going for an even coating. Now, take your small offset spatula and lightly press it to the bottom edge of the cake at about a 30 degree angle. Now, rotate the cake, holding your spatula against the side, but raising it up the side of the cake as you rotate so you get some nice, soft, irregular ridges, and it looks something like this. Now repeat this on the top of the cake, working from the outside edge in towards the center, and you will end up with this beautiful rustic design. For an organic minimalist design, you can stop there. But I feel like vanilla cakes always benefit from the tart flavor of fruit, so why not take it up a level and add some fresh fruit as a decoration? Always wash and dry your fruit before you add it to your cake, and then just be creative. You can make just two varieties of fruit like I have here look more interesting by simply cutting some of them in half. This is like building a Christmas wreath. Just put fruit here and there until you get the look that you want. And there you have it. A beautiful, fast, easy, soft, and fluffy vanilla cake that you can make without opening a box. This cake is so soft and perfectly moist and not too sweet. It makes perfect layer cakes and pairs great with my simple American buttercream frosting. The ratio of cake to frosting is really well balanced, so there's not too much or too little frosting. I have been serving this cake to my family and people of all ages, and even people who don't like sweets or cake, and they all really love this one. 
I am working on some different flavor variations for this easy cake method that I will be adding to my website in case you want something other than vanilla. I developed this recipe five years ago and have been perfecting it over the past few months just to share with you and I really hope that you enjoy it. Give it a try and leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and if you like this video be sure to click the thumbs up button subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend it's totally free and helps me more than you know for the full recipe which is also free and all the ingredient amounts click the link to my website in the description box below this video and i'll see you next time with another delicious and easy recipe